In this video, I would like to introduce the central limit theorem CLT. So in the previous lesson, we already discussed normal distribution. So normal distribution, I said that every time I mention the words normal distribution, you should have this curve in your mind. So you have a bell curve and then we have the mean right in the middle and then the standard deviation, the sigma that describes the spread of the normal distribution. And then we learn how to standardize a value so what we did was we take one data from the population so that data stands for x so this x is a random variable that follows normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma right still remember this so we have x follows normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma so the way we standardize what do i mean by standardize normal standardization so normal standardization means you compare one data to the entire population so let's say you you took sat you get your own score right so standardize your score means i want to compare your score to the entire population so what we did was we take the x subtract the population mean and then divide it by sigma and that is called standardized score so which is a z and then we are going to discuss a what if today so what if we take one sample instead of one data then you have to look at the red graph so in the red graph so this time i am not taking one individual data so instead of taking one data i will just take a sample so what is a sample sample is a group of data right so that means you have a population you reach your hand inside the population and then you grab a bunch of data out so let's say n1 is my first sample n2 is my second sample n3 is my third sample so on and so forth so in this population i took out many many samples n1 n2 n3 n4 n5 n6 n7 so on and so forth so i have many many samples and then for each sample what is a sample sample is a group of data right so n1 consider n1 as a list of numbers so you have a list of scores so let's say the sample size of n1 is 10 then you have 10 scores so you have 10 numbers written right in front of you and then n2 is another sample so within this sample you have another 10 data right in front of you same as n3 and n4 so within each sample you have a bunch of numbers right in front of you so one quick thing that we can do is we can find the sample mean right so all you have to do is you add them up and then divide it by the sample size so in each sample you get a sample mean n1 gives you x1 bar n2 gives you x2 bar so each sample gives you a sample mean now my question is what is the distribution of this sample means you have a bunch of x bars right my question again is what is the distribution of this x bars not one x bar x bars many many x bars so we, each x bar stands for one number right so mean is one number so you have many many x bars that means you have many many numbers so what is the distribution of this x bars a bunch of x bars now the answer is this x bars has its own distribution which has mean mu and standard error sigma divided by square root of n so take a look at the words i wrote below the graph so the population is normal the distribution of this x bars so the bunch of x bars i put in the yellow circle that is called sampling distribution because every x bar came from a sample right so the distribution i call this sampling distribution a bunch of sample what is the distribution of these samples right sampling distribution so the distribution of x bars is normal with mean mu and standard error which is sometimes you call the se standard error equals to sigma divided by square root of n so when you do normal standardization you are not standardizing one x value you are standardizing a group of the average of a sample which is x bar so you take x bars subtract mu divided by sigma over square root of n so which means a small modification from the previous standardization formula right from the previous standardization formula in the numerator you have x minus mu divided by sigma if this one you have x bar minus mu and then in the denominator you have instead of having sigma so since you have to consider the sample size right so 
do you see that I took many many samples and then each sample has a sample size right so I need to consider the sample size then you have to take sigma divided by square root of m so this sigma has their own distribution which has a mean mu and then a standard deviation or standard error sigma divided by square root of n. Now, I want to bring you another what if. Look at the yellow handwriting. So what if the population does not follow normal distribution? In the blue curve, that is normal, right? In the red curve, that is also normal. What if the population itself is not normal? And you can think about this. What if you don't even know what, what the distribution is? You have a population. The population is not normally distributed. Or you don't even know what the distribution is. So the distribution of the population remains as a big question mark. We don't know. Or we know that that is not normal. Then what do we do? So when the population is not normal, or you don't know what it is, don't worry about that. So let me introduce central limit theorem to you so the central limit theorem says as long as the sample size so do you do you still remember that inside the population we grab many many samples so as long as the sample size is greater than or equal to 30 the sampling distribution which is those a, a big bunch of x bars follows normal distribution with mean mu and standard error sigma divided by square root of n so look at the graph i, I gave you I have a, a picture, right? So that is not normal distribution, or sometimes you can say we don't even know what the distribution is. And then inside this population, I still take many, many samples. So N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, these samples, they are taken from a population that is not normal, right? Okay, so within each sample, I can find the sample mean. You don't need to know the distribution in order to find the sample mean. Sample is a bunch of numbers. You add them up divided by the sample size, then you get your sample mean. So each sample gives you a sample mean. You don't need to care about the distribution of, of the population. I don't care. I have a bunch of samples taken from a population. And then for each sample, there is a corresponding sample mean. Now, the distribution of those x bar, do you see that there is a green circle? The distribution of those x bars is normal with mean mu and then standard error sigma divided by square root of n. So when you standardize, you take z equals to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So that is how you do normal standardization. Okay, and then since we talk about this mean and sigma divided by square root of n. How do we find the how do we find the area under the curve under a, a standard normal curve? So this is what we discussed in the previous video. I've just quickly reviewed that for you. So let's say we have a standard normal curve. I have z1 and z2. So that means two cut, and I want to find the area between z1 and z2. So when if you know z and you want to find the area of probability, you use normal CDF. So the first number you have to input is the lower limit. The second number is the upper limit and then the mean and standard deviation. And then where do you find a normal CDF? You go to second and then you hit the VARS key. So you hit the second key on your calculator and then you hit the VARS key. The VARS key is on the left hand side of the clear key. And then you choose normal CDF and then you can do the inputs in there. And then what if I know the area? I want to find the corresponding z, then you use inverse norm. So you go to second was the inverse norm is right under normal CDF. So in the inverse norm calculator command, first you input the area and then the mean is zero. The standard deviation is one y, they are zero and one because we are doing z. z means standard normal, standard normal distribution. The mean is always, always zero. The standard deviation is always, always one. So the only difference between the previous chapter and this chapter is the standardization formula. So instead of having x minus mu divided by sigma, you have x bar r minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n. So that is the only difference. So if you fully understand how to do normal distribution, how to do normal CDF and inverse norm, you can learn this very, very easily. All right. So that will be the end of this 
lesson. So if you think my instruction is helpful, let me know in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, share the video for me. I appreciate your help as always. I see you all in the next lesson. Signing out. And before we sign out in the next lesson, I will give you an example that walks through the entire process. All right. I see you there.